as you chime in, in all over the world spreading the living word of God to all the nations and creating and providing choices for all, all those that need choices and we got quite the reaction from last night's message at 6 p.m. here in Los Angeles as we were speaking of the importance of, of, of peace and tonight we continue our message of peace by speaking of the peacemakers so our foundation scripture tonight will be Matthew chapter 5 verse 3 and we ask you to get a clean sheet of paper because we'll be tap dancing once again through the scriptures and brethren Jesus love you we love you there are MCM Ministries, Morning Star Communications Network right here in Los Angeles, California, the West Coast of North America. So let's go before the throne of God, lift up all in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Let's go and let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the peacemakers, for they shall inherit the world. They go forth and spread the living word of God of you. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this road of grace that brings us to the straight and narrow, where many called a few are chosen. We thank you for the day that given us strength to lift up our repentance at the AM hours and PM hours throughout the world, so you can so you can receive our prayers before your throne room, so you can receive, so you can pour down the new mercies of us every day. You are a God of faith. You're not a God of yesterday or, or tomorrow, but a God of faith, which is the now. We ask you, Lord, and we give you thanks and our prayers that we give us the strength to say, Lord, we want to know ever so more than we knew you yesterday and then pour down all the wisdom and discernment that we could handle. For in the Master's name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we love thee. And brethren, again, we are Morning Star Communications Network, MCM Ministries. We are a 501c3 certified church in the United States. And we ask you for your prayers and support. So come visit us at BrianChewitt.com, BrianChewitt.com. So let's get right into our message here. Our foundation scripture, verse 3 of chapter 5 of Matthew. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. The children of God. Just for a moment, as we ask God for help in today, today's world, our Father, we thank you that you bring us to the knowledge of your truth, to the fear of the Lord, understanding your wisdom and the knowledge. We thank thee for the word of for the word of God. Yet we say it so often, God. We say that many people are believers, but they're not doers of the word. Teach us not to take you for granted. Teach us to understand that end times of end times we are already living there is no foreshadows of anything anymore there is no foreshadows of the Antichrist he is among us let us all grow grow forward and in the matchless name of Jesus to go forward in today's world and today's moment coming forward in all that we do help us to receive it O oh Lord thy word but to believe in it and to obey it to live it in our daily daily life let us pray let us always move so blessed are the peacemakers we are in the movement of the Lord Jesus Christ for they shall be called the children of God it is true it is true brethren to say that almost everyone in the world wants peace isn't that true and a war torn countries and broken marriages and families where there is strife and contention and all sorts of relationships and nations people want peace it's also interesting that people all over the world want to be called the children of God isn't that true if they believe there is God if they believe in deity and almighty God whom they worship whether he's he's the right God or not whether he's the true God they want to class themselves as children of God. 
of course, the, the clarion cry that comes from every corner of the world today is that we are all children of God, no matter who we are or what we believe. But perhaps this beatitude that we just expressed it is, is the one that brings us the universal appeal. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. I have seen violence, I have seen strife in every country, every city that I ever lived in. And it was probably the lack of prayer, the lack of understanding, the lack of not turning to God of these places, of these provinces, of these states, of these leaders. We go and we, we, we ask our violence to be covered by the blood of Calvary to turn that into the prayers of peace. But yet the whole world feels that because praying for, for, for the forgiveness of God is so easy, it doesn't complicate anything, so we turn to violence. The clothing that much of the world is wearing today is a clothing of violence. Ezekiel said in Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 23, he said, this, the land and our land is full of bloody crimes. Solomon the wisest man said in Proverbs 15, the soul of the transgressor shall eat violence. It is described as a clothing of a world. It is described as a land of being covered in bloody crimes. That blood like the rain has saturated all this world. It's described as transgressors using violence and having violence as their daily meat and drink. It's their diet. We learned some time ago that we eat who what we eat is what we are. When we eat violence, when we feast with our eyes on the television or on the videos, a violence becomes what we feast upon, what we eat. Seventy times in the Old Testament scriptures the word violence is used. When it comes to the book of Malachi, and it's the end of the Old Testament, and therefore the New Testament, there are over 400 years of interim, that in those 400 years there were five bloody wars on the city of Jerusalem. Brethren, I have come against many artilleries and weapons of Satan. Our wife could tell you of much prayers that she had to go through as I survived many assassination attempts. But did I turn into violence? Did I turn into re rebelling or retaliation? I used what God taught me years ago. Forgiveness. And I drove my enemies insane by forgiving them. Why? Because I'm a peacemaker. I'm a change maker. I am a child of God. And I am not going to throw everything all away just because Satan in his little trick bags wants to control my thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. Satan get the chump butt head behind me because my wife right now is stomping on your foot as she is stomping on the heads of snakes and scorpions as I give this message. We come unto you, brethren, sharing in the glory of God's peace giving you all the experiences that we have survived. I want to bring your attention to your new joy of the morning in your part of the world, the AM morning right now. The problem of peace, the problem of peace you see is that the congregation that Lord Jesus Christ had at this message, the sermon, many of them expected him to be a military, a national, a materialistic kingdom of, of Messiah that he would bring. He would defeat the Romans. He would set up his kingdom. He, remember what John, in John chapter 6, after the great miracle that he performed, it says that the world, they would have made him king. He spent so much of his ministry telling them that he, was going to be, he wasn't going to be an earthly king in the sense which they have conceived him, but he would be the king of their hearts. His kingdom would be in their hearts. That was a kingdom that he was establishing at the moment in time. 
brethren, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 2, 14 sings to you, For he is himself our peace, our bond of unity and harmony. He has made us both Jew and Gentile one body. He has broken down, destroyed, abolished, and hostile dividing wall between us. That's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. And the harvest of righteous and the harvest of righteousness, of conformity to God's will and thought and deed is the fruit of the seed. Sown in peace by those who work of, of far and make peace in themselves and others that make that peace which means concord agreement and harmony between individuals with undisturbedness in a peace mind free from affairs of agitating passions and moral conflicts. James chapter 3 verse 18. Psalms chapter 4 verse 8. In peace I will both lie down and sleep for you Lord alone make, make me dwell in safely and confident trust. The confident trust who do you wish to have? Who do you wish to turn your life over to? Lord, take me, love me, I'm yours. Bring me to your mountaintop, bring me to your valley, bring me to the ointment of your truth. We are preaching the word, word of, of God, bringing you the opportunity of changing your life. Brethren, we have preached and preached messages over set, close to 800 messages over these broadcasts. You have available for you, pretty much at no charge, your own seminary school. And from my wife's teaching of the Beatitudes to my series of Joshua, your conquest, the change we go through for each task. And now we're speaking, we've, we've gone to the Revelation series. We're beginning in Mark and John. Brethren, I am bringing you to the unchurched nations with these broadcasts. I'm bringing you to this time right now. We come to you that the Word of God teaches that you have to get saved when God is calling. You can only answer God when God speaks to, speaks to you. We come here, brethren, knowing that Satan will give us many of his tricks, promise us great, great financial rewards if we take our lives. That's a bunch of crap. Or if you can be famous for taking on a movie theater in the Midwest of the United States. That, too, is a cowardly way out. You're doomed. Doomed, doomed, doomed. And what, what value do you have of taking another person's life? What value do you have, what power do you have to receive it is walking away from God. To receive and breathe violence is to walk away from that. There is several people that I know who live in a very established environment but they have leeches around them they have pathetic people that are into their drugs and incest and all kinds of things the breathing in a type of cancer the pride upon this breathing of such negative environments they corrupt their hearts and the hearts pretty much become darkened they are so far removed from God they don't even know that. We ask you, brethren, to take this opportunity and to have your times in accordance of truth and love coming to this time frame and the unity right now to be these change makers. Romans 10.13 is knocking on your door. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Dear God, 
Dear God, this is for those who are not saved. This is for, for those who want to be recommitted with God, to be saved. Do your best to repeat this off to me, please. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place paying the penalty for my sin. I am willing right now to turn from my sin and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I commit myself to you and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life and take control and to make me the kind of person you have always wanted me to be. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me forward. Thank you, Jesus, for, for throwing me on my knees. That's my wife praising your name in the background. I am praising your name, but most important, above and beyond anything that you ever dreamt of, the angels of heaven are singing your name before the throne of God. Before the throne of God. And on top of this, brethren, it's time to sow your seed of obedience into the Word of God. Get yourself into a Bible-believing, faith-based church. Midweek Bible study, Sunday services, fellowship of the saints. We come to you online to your broadcast. We're based in LA. You may come and visit us at our church. But wherever you are, from Russia, where we have a lot of brothers and sisters that watch us, to Africa, India, Europe, God bless you, Asia, underground churches in, in China, Singapore, Hong Kong. God is there for you. It goes more, trust me, I got a lot of emails from Buddhists. It goes beyond just having the tranquility of the inner peace. We must fight the fight of good faith. We must take a look and to breathe in the loving kindness of God. What we used to breathe in as far as negativity of those that are around us that represent the destruction of the evilness of Satan. We now look at these people and we ask them to get the heck out of our lives. I walked away from many a brethren that I've known for 30, 20 years. Some that I perform with, some of those I perform with I, I still have an association with, but they seem to change in me. They want to know the change of you, of me. Many of your friends will want to know the change of you and don't understand this. As you move into God's grace, you'll be persecuted, you'll be betrayed, you'll be hurt by those that love you. Jesus Christ was persecuted and went through many tribulations before he freely gave his life up for you on the cross. Brethren, and then he rose three days and the most important part of that empty tomb is it's empty for you it's empty for me it's empty for Anita it's empty for the Georges the Richards the Michelles the Janes everybody it's all no matter what corner of the world we live in it is there 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 for you so brethren we come before God right now the word peace shalom might have been we, we get into a, a piece of substance with peace shalom peace the absence of war and strife it's not peace not a negative thing it's a gift from God you heard me say this many times Galatians 5:22 the nine fruits of the spirit Galatians 5:22 I mean it's not just the absence of war but the presence of something special the wholeness and feeling an attitude of absolute well-being when you look at the state of man is there not a need of this is there not <clears throat> peace for broken tormented needs peace for terrible ripped apart homes peace for reputations that have been smarted through the lust and degradation peace for lands that have been ripped by ethnic cleansing and murder and rape, peace for the world that is dying. Oh, sure, we need it more than ever. But ever since man's declaration and independence from God, the Word of God says that it has been God's enemy. There has been no peace between God and, and man since Adam took the fruit of 
in the in the garden, and the book of Romans testifies to it that the carnal mind is the enmity against God. But it's worse than that because, brethren, not only have we declared ourselves the enemies of God, but God declared Himself the enemy of man. That's the truth. God is married to a backslider. No matter how good we are, no matter what we've been through, we're, we're a backslider. Through the Garden of Eden, through our forefather, through the object of divine anger, divine wrath, divine hostility, and as we and we, as we sit in a sinner's unsaved, we're totally depraved in every area, every facet of our lives. Every area is not depraved as it might be, but every area is tainted by sin. Do you know what Jonathan Edwards said? Very, very gifted, gifted minister that went through his own tribulations. The unconverted man would kill God if he could get his hands on him. Isn't that right? As many world leaders feel that same way. But it is to their own destruction. It is to their own ways. It is to their own pathetic time frames, brethren, that we lift all scriptures, that we lift all praise. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And God's peace shall be yours, that, that tranquil state of a soul, assured of its salvation through Christ, and so fearing nothing from God, and being content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is, that peace, which transcends all understanding, shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Job 22:21. This is my favorite verse from Job. Acquaint now yourself with him. And be at peace. And by that good shall come to you. Acquaint thyself with peace. With him. And show yourself to be conformed to his will. And to be at peace by that. You shall prosper and, and great. And good shall come to you. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Proverbs 16, verse 7. We must get into the habits of reading the Bible every day. But I'm too busy playing my Nintendo games or computer games or looking to shop for contacts. Guess what? You've got one. God. You've got this ministry. And brethren, Anita and the man, yours truly, Brian Hewitt, we invite you to become financial partners into our ministry, to travel with us, to send in your prayer request to brianhewitt.com. You'll see the prayer request link and just send us your, your prayer request. But to travel with us to the Bangladesh, to India. Our European crusade is coming up, followed by India, Africa, Australia in 2013. We come before you, brethren, giving you the soundness of all truth, the soundness of all love, giving us the, the time frame, brethren, of your, of your seed to be planted into this ministry. Remember, the power is in the seed, not the sower. And as you plant your seed into this ministry, your return on investment, if that needs to be said, the windows of heaven will open up and you'll have no room in your storehouses to, to store them from Malachi the last chapter of the Bible of, of, the, of the Old Testament brethren what more do you want what more can God do and say unto you we live in challenging times we all just recently heard what happened in the Midwest in the suburbs of Denver again we must be peacemakers and have the ways of peace. To have a mindset that does not go off by throwing in gas tanks into movie theaters. We, can, we cannot blame Hollywood for our problems. I've known these people that rule Hollywood for centuries. Does that mean that every problem I ever had was Hollywood's problem? Come on now. Let's be real. It's time to grow up. It's time to... We can't blame our own parents either. If I did... Holy 
God! Anita would have thrown me to the curbside when we first met. My first wife would have shot me many decades ago. I blame them not. I have forgiven my family. I moved on without them, and that's it. I have forgiven those who tried to kill me, and each and every one of those people that I forgave, they were driven mad, insane, totally out of their gourd. Nobody wants to be in their presence anymore. That's how you take down your enemy, by forgiving them, not by shooting them or, or taking the law under your own authority. Destroy them by the grace of God, forgiveness, and they shall no longer have the power to look at themselves in the mirror unless they turn themselves over to God. And in so, once they do that, the reflection they will be looking at is the reflection of Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. You will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace, whose mind, both its inclination and its character, is stayed on you, because he commits himself to you, leans on you, and hopes confidently in you. Hope faith and love. The three rings of royalty. You shall wear these upon your heart for all of eternity. God has bestowed this upon you. These giftings. And these giftings for those who still have not turned their life over to the Lord. It's time now. It's time now. Remember, Satan wants you to take all the time in the world to think this out. To take your time into planting the seed and to have yourself destroyed. Remember, Satan plants seeds of doubt, seeds of insecurity, to, call you, to call, control your thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. So, that's only three weapons he has in his trick bag. All you have to say is, Jesus! And he runs, 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 and away. What do you say, brethren? Let's all be champions. Let's all be pro warriors. God-like warriors that we fight the fight of good faith. We don't take anyone down with guns or knives or, or anything. And for those who want to go, go off and kill their music directors to hide their own sexuality, God's got a special place for you. And God has a special place for those who are coming into this right now. Coming into the power of your performance. Coming into the power of your time frame. Coming into the power of your loving truth. For in the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, let's go before the throne of God and pray out. Dear Jesus, we thank you for this time, the endless rhyme of your love that brings us to your road of grace, that brings us to your straight and narrow, where many are called if you are chosen. We thank you for this message of the peacemakers. Give us the strength to lift, lift up our repentance daily, our, our prayers right now, so you can pour the new mercies upon us in the AM hours. Dear God, dear God, give us the strength at first to say, Dear Lord, we want to know you ever some more every day, more than we knew you yesterday. And then bless us with all the wisdom and discernment. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And God, we go forward. We take this message of the peacemakers. We go out of our doors, out of our rooms, and go and proclaim the living word of God. In Jesus' name. Brethren, that concludes our broadcast for this evening. We thank you for your time. Until next time, do stay up to date with all of our news and information at BrianTewitt.com. BrianTewitt.com. Do check out our new online store. Do come and send us your prayer request. And do join us as a financial partner in our ministries. As a, you'll be a part of our evangelical team, our medical team. Jesus loves you. We love you. We walk by faith and not by sight. Au revoir. Adios. Good day for the people.